All right. Seems like we are just about ready to get going with Super Metroid. So I'll uh, pass it over to JRP and uh, we'll get this show on the road. Alrighty, welcome in everyone. So this is um, GT Classic Super Metroid. I'll explain it as I do it. All right, three, two, one. Um, hang on. Three, two, one, go. So every Super Metroid run starts off in the series. It's basically the tutorial area of the game. The one thing you're going to be noticing is I'm going to be randomly angling up and down. This is actually a movement technique as every time you angle your arm cannon and then go back to neutral, you move forward one pixel. So there's going to be a lot of that. So this is GT Classic. So what, sit this, what sets this apart from other categories is usually you grab all the items normally and kill all the bosses to enter Torian. And this category differs in that you have to, that we're going to go to Golden Torizo and Lower Northfair as fast as possible because there is an unused debug code in the game that happens to be at the Golden Torizo fight. If you hold all the face buttons, it will give you 53% items, every item except screw attack. Uh oh. So what I'm hearing is that this run uses cheats. Oh, you could call it that. It's not a cheat. It's um, an advantage. But yeah, basically, it gives you all the items. And this is a pretty unique category because you do stuff in this category you wouldn't see anywhere else. There's a lot of movement tech that, as a result of having all the items early, you'll never see. So we've, we've done with series and we're going to um, Planet Zebes. Oh, it really depends. Some people say ZBs. I don't know. So now we're going to go down to um, Retro Brinster to grab our Morph Ball. And we're going to be utilizing a few tricks here. Which is this one. So if you so there's a... Oh, there's a option in this game called moonwalking, which is exactly as it sounds, you, you can moonwalk. But it has the unintended property that it allows you to spin jump backwards. And for whatever reason, if you do that, your falling speed is uncapped. So you will just constantly gain speed. So you're able to fall down that room a few seconds faster. Uh, no? So there's a technique called a down back there. So if you run up the ledge and then press it down in the opposite direction you're going, you move forward. Um, uh, Okay. Mind if I quickly hop in with a dono? Yes. Yeah, we've got... Oh, you, you do no, mind. Go, go <laughs> uh, we've got $40 from Mum. Mum says save all the animals. Dad says go blues. I don't know. Alright, so we've got all the missiles and the morph ball and now all the enemies have spawned. <laughs> So now we're going to wall jump all up this room.
So this is the first boss, it's called Bomb Chorizo. It's a pretty simple boss, um, but there's a bit of luck to it, how fast you can kill it. It's, uh, it's RNG, it's luck dependent. What the, the drops you'll get from the balls it will shoot. So we'll either get a fast fight or a slow fight. Yeah, unfortunately, got the bad drops. So that's BT, it's a pretty easy boss. So the typical boss order for the like the regular any percent is usually well there's there's two categories or two variants of any percent. So you've got Fantoon Fantoon Ridley Dragon No Fantoon Ridley Craig Dragon or Craig Dragon no Craig Fantoon Dragon Ridley. Um, this one's doing fan no sorry, this one's doing um Ridley, uh, let me get in the elevator, sorry. This one's doing Kraid, Ridley, Dragon, then Fantoon. Because we're getting all the items early, we're doing the bosses in a very unique order. So this trick's called a Mock Ball. Um, Normally you're supposed to go fight a mini boss that will give you the supers, but we can just skip that entire in its entirety by doing that. It saves a couple of minutes. So mock balling is morphing into a ball but maintaining your running speed. Just a quick question for JRP. When is the uh, when should we cut off the save kill the animals incentive? Um, during the mother brain fight, okay. at the end, when the mother brain head hits the ground. Sure, oh, that's yeah. the traditional one, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotcha. You know it when you see it. Yeah, cool, thank you. So usually we grab all these items, but we're just gonna skip them. We're going straight to get our next major upgrade, the power bombs. So this is called Red Tower. This is an infamous room in this game. Because messing that up can result in tens of seconds. Oh, I'm not gonna risk it. There's a, something I usually do here, but like missing it is pretty catastrophic <laughs> so now we have the power bombs so we only need the power bombs because we can't get into lower norfair without them So yeah, um, now we're off to go to kill Kray, because we need the Varia suit. Um, Varia suit does damage reduction, and it's absolutely necessary, because we also need the heat reduction. Because Varia lets you um, enter heated rooms without taking damage. Now I soft locked in this room yesterday, so I played that super safe. <laughs> You can get stuck there. Yeah. 
So this is Craig's layer. I need to farm. Ah. Oh. So they need to kill every enemy. <laughs> need to kill every enemy in this room to open the door. Uh, I do need to farm for one singular missile drop. There we go. So this is the Craig fight. So I need to focus for two seconds during this fight. And that's the Craig quick kill. So usually, usually there's a whole second phase where Craig stands up, but if you shoot the super on a specific frame of its animation, its jaw gets locked open, and you can just keep shooting ammo into it. We've had, oh, We've had a $15 donation come in from Michael V. Dragon. It says, hey, hi, JRP, it's me, Michael. It's an honor for me to finally watch one of your live speedruns at PAX as a live audience. Good luck on your Super Metroid speedrun, JRP. Also, H. Hey. Thank you. Oh. Okay. So, there's two variants. So now that we have Varia, we can go into North Air. Um, so, this is where we're doing something slightly different. Usually, we skip the high jump boots which saves us 20 seconds. But the, the catch is, by doing that, it makes entering Lower North Air significantly more difficult. I'm basically saying from pretty free to you can't make a single uh, mistake kind of thing. There's no leniency with the high jump list, so we're grabbing high jump. I will also be making a safety save because there is a chance of death. Oh. Hi. Ooh. Just hang on. I was going to use the power bomb, but I need it. Alrighty, um... Ah, uh, you can read a few donations if you want. We don't have any new ones come through, but I will remind everyone that we do have an ongoing incentive for this run, a, a bid war for save and kill the animals. Um, I'm, anyone who's seen a Super Metroid run before will be very aware of that one, but that's going to cut off towards the end of the run um, during the Mother Brain fight. Save the Animals is currently in the lead at $355. Uh, kill is at 205 So if we want JRP to get the fastest run possible, we need to uh, get some donations in for Kill the Animals. You can, uh, you can head, if you uh, donate through the, uh, through the website, the Tiltify, you can just put it in the donation comments. Or if you donate in person here at PAX, just let the, uh, the staff member know what you want to put your incentive towards. Okay, so that was our first safety save. I'm gonna be very safe here, farm to max ammo. I was gonna say no power bombs is kind of weird. So coming up is lava dive. So this is why we needed all the power bombs in the Varia suit. So I need to pay attention to this bit. Alrighty. 
So that's the first part done. So in this category, there's two parts to it. So you got to get that specific room done, and then you got to do a two-frame window trick to open the gate from the wrong side. But because we're past Lava Dive, the risk of having to restart a large portion of the game is pretty much over now. So this is Lower North here. We're getting close to Golden Chorizo. Golden Chorizo has a... When the boss initializes in the, the game, it checks if you're pressing all the face buttons. X, Y... Um, the A, B, X, Y. And if you're pressing all of those, it will give you every item except screw attack. Nice. So that's all the hard bits over. So... Time to fail the easy bit. There we go. So that's the setup for the run done. So we, now we have every single item. Nice. So now we can grab our screw attack. So the reason why we grab screw attack after is because it doesn't give you the items, it resets your inventory. Oh. So if you grab screw attack and then do the code, you actually lose screw attack permanently. So now it's basically just a boss rush. Um, you can read a few... Um, we're free for another minute or so. Sure thing, yeah. Uh, no new donations, but I will also mention that uh, uh, PAX this year, Ospeedruns is participating in the Penny Arcade Pin Quest. Uh, if you're here at PAX and would like to purchase a, a Speedle pin, you may do so in person over at the uh, runner management desk on the right-hand side of the stage. All proceeds from the sale of those pins will go towards Cure Cancer Australia. Also, question for JRP, why GT Classic? Why run this category? What's, what's like... Why do you enjoy it compared to the other ones? Uh, it has a lot of movement tech that's unique to this category. Um, there's a lot of stuff you do in this that you'll never see anywhere else. And because you have all the upgrades so early, it, it's really fun to play. It's really quick. Sick. one of the hardest strats in the game. But yeah, it's just a, it's a very fluid category. It, it's, you don't stop anywhere. Uh oh. Miscounted. Eh, it should be dead. So the way you end the fight is you get picked up. Riddle is a unique boss where it doesn't die when it reaches zero HP. You have to sort of trigger the death. So by getting grabbed, it triggers the cutscene for Riddle to die.
So that's our first sword charge I've done this run. So the way sh Speed Booster works is it only checks if you're pressing the run button on a specific sprite, like a sp specific frame of a run animation. So you can tap the button on that animation, that frame, and let go. And then when the frame comes back, you can press it again. Because the longer you hold run, the more speed you get. We got a $15 donation from Square Eyed Jack. He says, uh, I played Super Metroid for the very first time last year, struggled through it, but loved it. You're blowing my mind right now, dude. Thank you very much for that. So that's, done with, that's basically the hardest part of the run out of the way. This is a quite stressful run to do live because there's two points. The, when we jumped in the lava and we hit that gate switch from the wrong way, those have ended many runs because usually in an attempt, you only have enough ammo to do it once. So if you miss it, there's no recovery. Every enemy has a 2% chance of dropping more ammo and it takes like a minute to kill three. So now we're heading off to Meridia, which is the underwater segment, to fight the boss called Dragon. Now I didn't mention this before, but I actually have Grapple Beam and X-Ray. But because the way I obtained the items wasn't the intended way, the, the HUD never reinitialized. So it just comes up as nothing. Let's see if I can do this. No. So, I bring that up because X-Ray is kind of useful in this run. See, when on some bosses... Um, when you use X-Ray, it actually wastes their invulnerability frames without your beam moving. So, by spamming it, you can do this. The next trick's coming up is a pretty infamous trick. That's called the full half -y. and it, it's way harder than it looks. You usually have about 10 frames to spare, um, 5 to 10 frames to spare, so you gotta time all your jumps perfectly. So this is Dragon. Now if you don't know, if you were to trace the outline of these right here, it actually spells out some words. I'm not going to spoil it. So this is Dragon, pretty hard boss. So yeah, that's Dragon. So yeah, um... I, the reason I didn't do that with other bosses is some bosses, when your beam hits them, your beam disappears. And that trick only works if your beam doesn't do that. We've had a $40 donation from Caleb with no comment. Thank you very much for that. We're getting very close to 5,000 on the donation total, so maybe we can get that by the end of the run. Right, so now we're heading back to Criteria to kill Fantoon. Yep. 
go. What I just did is a really hard thing to do. I'm kind of happy I got that. So now we're done with Meridio. So one more boss, Fantoon. And with Fantoon, Fantoon's a really infamous boss in the speedrun community because it can do three patterns. It can do a s slow, mid, or a fast. And we want the fast. A slow can lose you about 20 seconds. So, especially in any percent, it's a really big reset point. I... So now we're in wrecked ship. Phantoms all the way at the bottom. So what pattern do you think it's going to be? I'm saying mid slow. <laughs> oh, if I get a second round fan tune, I think it's. Oh, true, really it's only one round in this category, I forgot. <laughs> mid then. Ah. Uh. Huh? What was that about getting a second round? Nothing. <laughs> I said two rounds. My thumb slipped onto the eyes. You win. Dang, but the slow slow is really, really bad. That's really rare. We've got a $77 donation from Gar. They say, been playing this for 30 years and you're blowing my mind. Wish my big brother was here as this is his favorite game. Thank you very much for that. And that actually puts us over, or yeah, that puts us over 5,000 for the uh, total donation. So thank you so much for your generosity, everyone. It's all going to a great cause. Ah, uh, yes. Right, um, so now we're done with Wreck Ship. We've, we've killed um, the, we're calling the G4, the Golden 4. Interesting. So, you need to kill Phantom, Ridley, Kraid, and Dragon to access Endgame, which is blocked off by a Golden Statue. Which is why we call it the Golden Four. G4. Ah. G. This is G4, so we have to wait here a minute because yes, um, this is the entrance to Torian, which is the final area of the game. Um, I will be making another safety save because it's not likely to happen, but there is a potential soft lock. So I'd rather not do 20 minutes of the game again.
We've got $15 from Michael Voss, says, great work, JRP. Going nearly as fast as Adam Saad on the wing. So these are these rooms in Torian are notoriously difficult. So I'm just going to save here. Um, you'll see why. Like they're very very hard to execute. Oh, actually, I do need a stock of them health. So I need to grab some health. Not having enough health is fine, but... Alright, now we're, we're fine. Hi. So I'm going to do a grouping strat here. Okay. Some of those Metroid rooms I played pretty safe, but mostly that was just health and ammo management. Because I want to finish with full health. So this is the infamous baby skip. So there's two outcomes. Um, we're going to get the skip, or I'm going to hit this and we're not going to get it. So here's the last safety save. There's too many. There's a. What I'm gonna do in the Mother Brain fight is called stand up glitch. So usually there's a cutscene then that forces you to the ground, and we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna force myself to stand up in that cutscene. Before you start the fight, just quickly, we've got $15 from Lucent W, who says, JRP, it's Plocktober. When are you going to de delight us with a Plocktastic adventure with Plock? Also, H, good luck, have fun to all runners and organization. Um, and $101 from Floor, who says, yo, JRP, good luck with the run, and may your D-pad be ever friendly. Thank you very much, everyone. No, I just bought a copy of Plock the other day, so I won't play it. <laughs> Nah, my defense has been alright this uh, today. So this is Mother Brain. Because we have all the beam upgrades, it's a pretty quick fight. The cutoff is when Mother Brain dies, I'll tell you. Gotcha. Can I read a couple during the fight or do you need to focus? Um That's all good, I'll wait. You can read one. Okay. $15 from Tinny, who are... Oh, it's a question for you. Do you think we'll land Dan Houston now that Carlton have secured picks 12 and 14? P.S. Love your work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I needed to refill my health. Because it's just enough health to let me stand back up and do this. So now we've triggered the cutscene without being forced into the ground, then we can do this. So usually you're supposed to be in a cutscene unable to move, but because we're glitched the cutscene, Oh. We can move around and damage by the brain early. 
I'm not entirely sure how it works, but by damaging yourself to a specific amount of health and getting hit by the rainbow beam, it just it just does that. Close the soft locking. That's the cutoff. All right, we will be saving the animals. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, generosity with that. Save the animals one with three hundred and fifty-five dollars against two hundred and five for kill. Can we reconsider? <laughs> we have to have to listen to the voice of the people. And to do something for the blue bomber. So, like Mega Man? Hey, I know that game. Or not, we're not doing it. Nah, I'm not doing it. We had $100 come through from Cryptic Jackknife. Says so much love to the AU speedrun crew for representing this wonderful scene I've been a part of for a decade now. Here's to another, uh, both for me and for all speedruns at PAX. Thank you so much. The animals have been saved. We've also got four dollars from Bush Camper forty five twenty nine, who says hi Jeff, hi Skylar, hi JRP. And time's coming up. Oh, I want to end the style. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, GT Classic. It's basically use a dig bug code to get items early and you basically just rush for the entire game. Pretty quick category, it's pretty fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Really awesome run, thank you so much JRP. We gotta watch the cutscene, hang on. Oh yeah. <laughs> we gotta see them come, uh, the animals coming out from the right. There they go. Bye bye. It's the in game time. Twenty six. Not too bad. And that's it. That's Super Metroid. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again, JRP, and we will. Uh, quickly get some setup done and then uh, we'll be back with a Highland song by Alley Cat in just a little bit.
All right, all right. We'll be getting started up here in a couple of minutes with the next run, which is a Highland song by Alley Cat. Uh, just swapping over the hosts now. I'm, my name is Lacey Stripes. I've just taken over from Dactley, and you'll be sitting with me for the rest of this run. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Stick around. We'll see you again soon. Just while we're getting set up here, I'd just like to remind everybody that we are Oz Speedruns, a group doing speedrun events to raise money for charity. For this event, we're raising money for Game on Cancer, a charity which funds early career cancer researchers who are working across all areas of cancer research. If you'd like to donate, you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com or in person, you can do that at the runner management desk, which is just around the corner here if you're in person. Another thing as well, if you have been wondering, we are currently participating in the Penny Arcade. Our speed runs are participating this year. If you would like to purchase a speed or pin, you may do so in person at the runner management desk. All proceeds from the sales of these pins will go towards Cure Cancer Australia. As we're waiting for that to get set up, I will let you all know. Uh, we have a $20 donation from Sinray, which says, due to lack of donations for either, put 10 towards naming Kite Surge and 10 towards naming Kite Surge Kite. All right, we can get that organized. And just as a reminder for everybody, we do have those incentives coming up soon for Hack Infection. One is for Kite's name, so you can name the player character, and the character limit for that is 14. We also do have, for the same run, the voice language. So the NTSCU version of the game has English and Japanese voices, so you can donate towards either of those. All right, we're ready to go. So we're going to toss this one over to the High, a Highland Song. 